All right, welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. We're going to take a look at the Forex market. Be aware that this uh, webinar is intended for a global audience. Take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com to find out more information on whether it's suitable for you. Also, trading for exchange at global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice, it's for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this video, you agree and webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you're aware of the risk involved when trading for exchange. All right. For those that were in the live session here, you heard that twice, but as I said, I mistakenly didn't click on the record button. So, good, let's take a look at the year dollar. Uh, we uh, got a bit of a wick here, a bit of an oversold situation. We had a nice momentum to the upside pretty early in the day and uh, got a bit of a retracement now at this moment. So uh, I would say that looking at the year dollar one hour chart, that is still more of a uh, sell zone. We have this resistance level, this resistance trend line, the 61.8 FIB, the 112.50 level, pretty close by. So from that point of view, perhaps a bit more of a resistance zone uh, and then more of a correction to the upside as I said yesterday in yesterday's video. The pound dollar is a bit different because the pound dollar actually broke out of this very neat downtrend channel that has lasted for a long time and uh, broke out with a lot of steam. Seemingly looks like five waves. So the pound dollar looks a bit more bullish, but maybe not right now, by the way, maybe a bit later on because we just seem to have completed five waves. And once you complete five waves, then there's a chance of an ABC correction. So, Ultimately, the break is bullish, but you know the breakout has already moved a, a considerable distance, has moved quite far. So it seems like that trade is already behind us and has happened already in Asian session, in fact. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, in a way, trying to catch the ABC perhaps is, is what remains for, for today, maybe. There is already a big wick on top. So the dollar was weakening today. And uh, did weaken a bit, weaken a bit yesterday at the uh, here this last these three hours, four hours. Um, but at the moment, maybe a bit of a dollar strength coming in, just to get that retracement. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised then to see another rally, at least on this pound dollar. Your dollar is a bit different. They used to be correlated. Indeed. Now I would say they're uh, at the moment not so much correlated at this particular one hour chart, at least. Nope. And the upside is not surprising. It eventually had to happen. There was a ton of divergence between these bottoms. And um, it already quite a dragged on for a lot longer than uh, than I expected, at least. And I mean, it, it was it lasted so long that I thought maybe we would get one more drop, but we didn't. And eventually, we went back to those moving averages. The long term, actually, we passed through it. Let's put on the moving, the moving averages. And you can see we not only went to the long term, but we went through it a bit. Now, we know that even though it, uh, it goes through it a bit, on the very first attempt, um, you know, that in general, the long term moving averages are a rough zone for uh, indicating resistance. So even though we went through it a bit, it's still kind of a, yeah, it's, it's, it's still a resistance zone. It's still at a, at a very, let's uh, say, extreme level, relatively speaking. So I would still expect a bit of a correction, at least back to, for instance, the 21 EMA, probably a bit below it, in fact. I would, in this case, use the FIB, put the FIB on the entire upside. And, well, 61.8 FIB wouldn't be strange. And typically, a three-wave down. So let me open my drawing tool. Okay, one second. Anyhow, um, three wave down, you know how that looks like. It's something like this. Down, correction, and then down again. All right, so typically waves A and C tend to be equal to each other. So you can already kind of calculate a bit what is the distance here between the top and the 61.8. 
about 140 pips, which is a fib number, not surprisingly. So 144. Um, so they're roughly going to be about uh, 72 pips each. Uh, let's see. Probably easier if I just use a fib. I know I'm looking a bit into maybe perhaps too far in the future, but so something like this. I move down to the 38.2 fib. That could be wave A. I bounce up to the 61.8. That could be wave B, and then move down again to the confluence of the 61.8 and the minus 61.8 for wave C, and that could be a bouncing spot for another wave. That depends, you know, whether this is basically a 1 or, or an A, this first upside. It could be both. Uh, we can look at higher time frames to maybe get a bit of a better idea what it could be. But uh, it could be part of a bigger A, B, C. Or perhaps a one, two, three. Depends how far the third leg goes. So what are tradable parts? When I look at this piece, what are tradable parts? Well, I think that uh, to a certain degree, trading, ah, can I draw this, this breakout? Does anyone still hear me? Does anyone hear me? Hi there, everyone. Sorry about that. This is uh, very annoying. Does anyone hear me at this moment? Testing one, two, three. Does anyone hear me? Hi there. Now you should be able to hear me. Sorry about that. No idea what's going on. I guess this time it was my internet and not the software.
already. Sorry about that. Very annoying. Uh, I'm not sure what you heard last. But uh, so I'm not sure where to start again. But I was talking about the ABC. Good. That's the part you still heard. So, yeah, the, you know, tr trying to trade the C could be interesting. Trying, to, I think most importantly, the uh, the wave C could be interesting, but more importantly, the start of wave two or or uh, the start of B here, right? We have a mini. Let me draw it in red. We have a mini ABC here. The red C could be interesting, but especially the start of blue B or the blue, start of blue C, I should say. All right, sorry, folks. I'm not sure what's going on. If it, if it happens again, I, I, maybe we'll have to cut it short because I don't want to uh, annoy you with all these ins and outs, but we're back. And uh, so the start of blue C or the start of green three, right? At the 61.8, the minus 61.8 confluence at 152.50, that is the most interesting one because that's where I do expect the most, uh, most movement, most potential, biggest space. So that is the interesting, most interesting one, I think. Still a bit of a counter trend trade, perhaps, but um, that seems very interesting. Now, the downside from 153.50 down to 152.50 from red B to red C, also not that bad. And at this moment, uh, the only thing I think left could be either a small part of uh, the internal blue A or green one, which is probably not going to be a lot. I think we're already a bit in the oversold region, so I don't think that's that's not interesting in my opinion. Could be the start of A, the red A. Um, maybe it's possible with a target of 153-ish for about 50 pips. And uh, yeah, it's 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 okay. I mean, typically uh, the start of a wave like that is uh, is a bit riskier. So let's see, price is already a bit lower. So there's not a lot of space here uh, compared to the risk. Actually, the risk is already a bit more than the reward. So I, I think it's a bit limited. Maybe if it hooks back to, let's see, 153.70. Could be a bit better because then uh, the risk is uh, 25 pips and the reward is maybe some uh, 65, so that's a bit better. But uh, at the moment, I would say the reward risk is not that much there. There was a good, uh, you know, reversal trade like on the euro dollar, but would have had to have been a bit higher. Would have had to have been last hour, uh, you know, probably maybe around this candle here as it shows weakness. This is a doji. It's the fifth candle, so it shows that perhaps this upside momentum is over. That could have been a reversal trade worth it. Now you can see already how much it traveled to the downside. It's already at the 23.6 fib, for instance, here, which is again a bouncing spot. We just dipped below the 21 EMA on a five minute chart, which could be a bouncing spot. So uh, it would have to make a rally again back to perhaps this trend line here and the 78.6 fib and make that another fall down to the uh, long-term moving average on this five-minute chart. Something like like this, for instance, right? Even on the five-minute chart, we see the same pattern. A, B, C, perhaps, right? Let's say, or one, two, three, four, five. Let's see how far it goes. But uh, it <clears throat> looks like it could be the bottom of A. Um, so rather wait for the B to, to trade it to C. And this could be, again, a bigger uh, A. Well, normally ABCs don't end in A, but okay, for the simplicity, um, right? That could finish in another wave down, for instance, wave up again and another down, bigger correction on a higher time frame. It doesn't have to play out like that at all. Um, but the, how do you say, it? the uh, probability that we get a bounce here is too high for me to take a sell right, right now. We'd want to sell it higher. I could be even worth perhaps a buy, but I think the potential for upside is pretty limited. 
And uh, I don't know, I would like to see a bigger retrace. Just looking at the hourly candle and the big wick, you just see that the potential for an upside is, is very limited. All right, so depending on which time frame you're looking at, um, you can see that even within, on the lower time frame, even within this trade, there could be several kind of movements until we get to that A. And then we get to B, and then we get to C, and then this is how you can kind of piece together. And depending on which time frames you like to trade, you can try to catch a, a, you know, a slice of that uh, action. Um, the most interesting, in my opinion, is either the, as I said from here, second, from here or from here. But within this A, if you go to low enough time frame, there could be some trades as well. Uh, your dollar is the same thing, also still moving down, uh, but now getting into a, a bit of a bounce zone. So um, right here, not very interesting in my opinion, because of the fact that the euro dollar in general is in a triangle and it's about halfway that triangle. So as you know me, that's not something you know very interesting environment. At this point, we got a Decent four-hour candle to the upside, but we also run into a very uh, big resistance zone with the trend line in here. So at the moment, the euro dollar does not seem that interesting at this point. Dollar yen uh, ooh, seemed to make actually uh, a bit of a bearish break. Didn't actually break this trend line. Now it's reverting back up. It's kind of messy. Seems like it wants to break or actually broke this trend line already. Could be a break. I think the four hour chart could be a, a good one to monitor. Four hour chart here. I mean, if it does break with a four hour candle through this trend line, it is breaking the triangle to the upside. And uh, if it has a if it has a candle close near the high, that could be a good um, confirmation that uh, more upside could continue or could happen. So. I would rather wait for this four hour candle to close. I think if in doubt, you know, let the four hour close, it doesn't rhyme. I wish it did, <laughs> but uh, that I think is always a good uh, rule of thumb for doubtful cases. This trend line is a bit doubtful. I think the whole dollar yen is a, a bit choppy. So waiting for that four hour candle will not hurt. And uh, from that point of view, um, we still have a few hours to, to wait. If it does close near the high and close something like this, it does look like engulfing twins, does look like a strong close. And uh, a entry right here with a stop loss below the candle lows, which is about, we it's a bit bigger than I expected somehow. Well, it's more than 100 pips. Wow. It seems like a small candle, actually, because this downside was so big. Excuse me. But the downside was 800 pips, so I guess that's why. <laughs> I thought the four-hour engulfing candle looked more like 30, 40, 50 pips. It's more than 100 pips, but still, you know, if you look at four-hour engulfing twins, uh, I guess uh, it's not that uncommon. So it depends. Uh, if you think that's too big, you can always wait for a bit of a retracement. When the four-hour candle closes well, put a fib on the four-hour candle, wait for the 38.2 fib. That will give some discount. Could even go deeper. Could go to the 50 or the 61.8 fib as well. So that would be the alternative, kind of waiting for the retracement of this four-hour candle before buying. So that's my view on the uh, dollar-yen. This triangle... 
really the dominant factor here on the UJ. All right, Ozzy has a very bearish weekly candle with the close very near the low, indicating that the bears stay in control. They've stayed in control already for very long. And this uh, continuous downtrend actually all the way, I mean, really all the way for two years already. But uh, yeah, we had some retracement here, a period of three months. Of course, we've had here three months up then probably two months sideways not even longer another three months sideways so yeah we've had some stalling moments but ultimately i mean the trend is lasting along and had even acceleration from this point so it continues and continues and last week was not much difference really with another strong bearish candle monthly chart shows the same thing this monthly impulse has lasted really ever since uh, now one year and uh, two months. Anyhow, we are getting uh, closer to some kind of monthly support zone. It's a huge zone between 60 and 68. So it still has some space to go probably. But uh, yeah, 60, 68 could be a bit of a bouncing spot just looking at the monthly then. So if we then zoom in to lower time frame, Looks like we're getting into a, an interesting re retracement zone indeed. I agree with Darshan. Let me put the, look at this weekly Fib again. 38.2 Fib is probably interesting. It's 70, it's a psychological round level. Let's see, we can put a fib maybe on this upside here. It's a minus 61.8 target. So I would be looking for 70. That could be an interesting turning spot indeed. We can draw a lot of trend lines on this. And it depends, you know, different angles to be honest. So it's a rough uh, resistance zone in a way. So that looks good for a turnaround, I agree. Yep, I'm gonna keep an eye on, uh, on this odd USD. So what else? Pound New Zealand, Dashan is mentioning. Let's take a look at that. Good bounce from the uh, long term moving average, indeed. Still remains a bit of a funky uh, environment due to this match, massive uh, wick, in fact. We got a trend line break. That's good. And um, I think if it gets back to the one hour long term moving average, it could be a very interesting spot. Probably some interesting confluence with, first of all, the moving average, obviously, the 50 fib. And some support levels here, I would say. So that could be an interesting uh, retracement. So at the moment, I'll probably rather wait for a bounce back at the 50 fib. This uh, uptrend channel continues on the uh, dollar CAD.
let's see, kind of choppy environment. Let me move the fib here. There will be a lot of trend lines drawn here. I think I'll take that one away. Bit too choppy, in fact, I think. Ultimately, definitely an uptrend, but, uh, well, maybe if it gets to the 50 fib, 132.50-ish, 132.30, it could bounce again. Let's see if there's something more interesting. Kiwi, same thing like the Aussie. Probably hooking back to resistance. I'd rather keep an eye on the Aussie at the moment. We could take a look at the odd New Zealand, perhaps. Let's see. Euro yen. Very strong hourly candle. Kind of retracing a bit uh, that hourly candle. So, uh, considering the strength of that candle, some more upside might not be very strange putting a fib on this, this hourly candle. And uh, the closer it gets to this, this little, yeah, this little supply and demand zone, obviously, 133.60 would be a great spot. I mean, that has a lot of confluence. You have that zone there, this zone right here. Uh, price then retrace all of those candles, and a fib. Not sure if it gets that deep, but if it does, that could be interesting. It's a tight stop loss, pretty big reward. If uh, one is aiming for the minus two seven two target, one thirty four sixty. How about downside? Well, as you can see, one, two, three, four candles have only posted, so it's a bit early for a reversal. Also, looking at the one hour candle, I think it looks pretty strong. I don't, I don't see why I would want to take that risk against shorting against that candle personally. Even though maybe a retracement seems likely here, I don't think that is worth it. Ultimately, this looks like a pretty interesting zone for resistance. It gets a bit higher right here, right into the 135 zone. So what could happen is a bit of a retracement here, a bounce back up to the 135. That could be still a resistance zone for more downside. It could be maybe a pattern that plays out under your yen. Let's see, this is the fifth candle. So I'd like to see a couple more candles here. Maybe uh, make a dash to 38 or 50, then bounce again. If it shows failure to break this top, it could be still a bit of a reversal short, but uh, yeah, it seems risky at the moment. Definitely not now. Let's see, pound yen, very strong upside. I'm not shorting against that, that's for sure. Yeah, it is in the long term, maybe one hour uh, long term moving average. Doesn't mean that it has to turn right now, just because it, you know it could. It's a zone. It's not exact level, so it could push further than that. And looking at the strength on the 50 minute chart, it probably will, in fact, um, and we'll probably have some few breaks at this top on the five minute chart before we get uh, a bit of a bigger retracement. And it's not easy to trade to the upside because the move up was so much, so so fast, so big. Stop loss placement is pretty pretty difficult, I would say, on this one, or it's going to be very large. So let's see if there's something else.
Still kind of in a choppy terrain here. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, doesn't seem that interesting. Good channel, but we did bounce off that target already twice. Let's take a look at the odd New Zealand. Some of these charts still look very wacky because of all this, uh, these wicks. Looks like a triangle or perhaps bull flag. At this moment, it's really kind of halfway. Your can retrace all the way up to the 78.65. That could be a resistance spot. A channel like that, but ultimately uh, pretty strong momentum still before that. Bounce off the 78.65. Probably we'll wait for the four hour candle here too. If we get good engulfing twins, that could be maybe an indication of, uh, of retracement. Sure, we had bearish candle here too. Those things happen, but we are a bit deeper now. So your CAD looks interesting to keep an eye on the four hour chart, just like the dollar yen, I would say. And even the euro dollar four hour chart, I would say. I know I said I didn't find it. I know I said that. I didn't find this one interesting, but uh, yeah, if it does, maybe posting golfing twins, I don't know. Ultimately, I think this trend line is still probably key. Break of this trend line, break of this 110, 111, there's some space down to 110. Or break of this trend line, then we're probably in a bullish retracement. So that, I think, is the main, the main one on the... Uh, the euro dollar. Back to the pound, did get a bit of a bounce here at the... Uh, the what fib is it 23.6 fib so far the bounce has been small let's see maybe that's all maybe that's the, the entire bounce so it's a shallow fib so it doesn't have to necessarily bounce far um if it does bounce up to this level it could be kind of a scalp to the bigger 38.2 fib And the long-term moving average, but doesn't seem like we're going to get that high at the moment. And uh, well, let's see. At the moment, the shallow bounce. Aussie is up at 85, 69.85. Sorry about that. I have a bit of a cold. Maybe you hear my voice a bit uh, different. I don't know, but. Uh, Let's take a look at Euro Pound. More Euro weakness, you can see, breaking this triangle to the downside. Let's move up. We already hit the target. We'll move up this FIB. And here too, engulfing twins like this could signal the retracement potential down to the 50 fib, 72.25. Not a big fan of the euro pound, but that could you know, be a downside trade here. And of course, even the 50 fib, although it's strong, could only be a pause. It could even go further. It could go down to 61.8. But the 50 seems to be the first bouncing spot. 
So ultimately, uh, depending on uh, well how today goes, looking at the euro pound, it seems like when shorting, it could be better to short the euro like the euro cat. If looking for longs, it looks like looking for pound could be a bit better, like the pound New Zealand perhaps, or the uh, pound dollar, or the, let's see, yeah, looking at the euro pound. Other things could be odd to use D and the dollar yen. Both really showing a dollar strength. Let me take a look at the odd yen. Odd showing a bit more strength. Well, actually, it's the yen that's showing more strength because we're in a downtrend, but at the moment, the Aussie is retracing. So probably the dollar yen is moving. Uh, yeah, the, that's why the dollar yen is moving up. But the odd USD is also moving up. Let's take a look at the DAX. Any other things that maybe you find interesting? I myself... Uh, I'm having a bit of a slow start this uh, this week. I mean, first of all, we had the national holidays in the U.S., of course, so I personally didn't look and trade yesterday because of that. And also have this cold, so I thought it could be a good combination. So kind of a slower start than, uh, than usual for me. But uh, so if you have anything in, in vision, let me know. Maybe I missed something. But um, let's take a look at DAX now quickly. Yeah, still showing the same kind of environment, isn't it? Still bouncing here or going sideways. This is already day well, 11. So that downside is over. Already a few days, of course. Which means that if we look at the four-hour chart, that... Uh, This could actually be a bit of an impulse, and this is kind of like a triangle sideways. It could break both ways, really. If it breaks to the upside, long-term moving average could be the goal. If it breaks down, the bottom, really. You can draw those trend lines there. Something like this. It's getting close to a decision spot. So that could be crucial. From a weekly point of view, of course, we had still a bullish candle at the long-term moving average, and that could provide that bounce back, back up. Let's see, Caitlin is talking about 50-minute chart. Uh, which way did you enter? I think probably long, considering prices at support. We're talking about moving averages, so that must be, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can see there might be reasons to do that today. I, I personally will skip it. As I said, I don't like to try. It's halfway to triangle, so it's. But I can see what you mean, though, obviously. And you have some uh, trail line support here too. Those are good things. From that point of view, it makes sense. But still, I rather. I don't know. I don't like trading it in triangles halfway. Um, 
I was thinking about shorting it up in here. Ultimately, it didn't pull the trigger, though, just because of the timing. It was still kind of hesitated because of the fact that Europe really wasn't open. So I was thinking about shorting in here just because of the, uh, as I said in the video, because of the 61.8 fib and the resistance and close to the trend line. I saw more potential for that. Now it's back to the middle, and I still a bit doubting because of uh, the fact that it's in the middle of the triangle. Here is more was more at the top of the range of the triangle, so I like the short potential. Hey there, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's, it's very annoying technology problems today. I don't know what's going on. No clue at all, but uh, I hope we can continue that with any problems. Here you can see this is still the fifth candle. It's still alive, the upside and, and kicking, in fact. And fifth candle looks bullish, so it looks like you can see how dangerous it is to, to jump into a reversal trade too soon, because otherwise we'd be whack right now. Probably. I still think a retracement will eventually happen, but probably this top might break a bit and then we'll probably see a bit of a retracement. Oh, you never know. This could ride a bit further than, uh, than I'm expecting. Who knows? It could shoot up right away to the target, by the way. At 135-ish, uh, which still is a pretty hefty resistance zone. But ultimately, of course, if they're very strong for our candles, then uh, we can't underestimate the momentum either. Just because there's a resistance zone here doesn't mean that the current momentum isn't strong enough to push through it. It, it always can. And if there's strong four hour candle like that, then another one, and you know, maybe four hour point of view, uh, it could be good to wait for a four hour exhaustion candle somewhere in 135, 135.25. That way there's more confirmation that price is indeed turning at this target. For the moment, probably retracements for more long seems more interesting at the moment. But it really didn't make much of a retracement. It went, only went to the 23.6 fib, which is very shallow and not worth it, in my opinion. Sometimes it is. Not in this case. So let's see. It's going to hit the resistance zone and turn around or will it make a bit of a bearish retracement first before I'm going up? Depends, you know, what, which one it does, how I will react to, to the euro yen. Let's see. It ultimately looks a bit interesting, so I can keep an eye on that. I'll use the still same spot. Nothing really new, I think. Any other questions maybe for you to ask me? I think that before the audio gets disconnected again, <laughs> I think, uh, let me ask you if there are any questions. I mean. I think that uh, to summarize my thoughts, for me, your dollar break to the downside or break to the upside. Pound USD, I think that's clear, mostly upside from over 250. Perhaps a bigger ABC could still be interesting as well. Dollar yen, four hour engulfing twins. Odd USD looking for resistance at 70. In my opinion, Euro pound looking like Euro is showing more weakness, but four hour chart could be important to keep an eye on that. Euro yen just discussed and uh, pound is in maybe 50 fib and your cat for our candles 
here, perhaps for downside. Would like to see the four hour bearish candle a bit bigger and a close near low. So those are just some ideas that I have for today. Yuri, and personally, I wouldn't be surprised if it hits this target. Kind of a up, shallow target, and then typically you'll get a deeper retracement. All right, we stopped here at the 23.6, so these fibs are still alive, unless price goes up to the minus 61.8 target, obviously. And uh, it's kind of a, I think it's called the shark pattern, isn't it? Something like this. So still, the long, I think, has the best opportunity, as long as it doesn't hit the minus 61.8 target. And depending on how much you want to trade, even maybe even scalp downside from, from this target here, right? Down to about, uh, indeed, this 50 fib. Yeah, ultimately it is indeed. And then you get the neckline break, you get a bit of a downside for, well, it's not much because we're looking at a five minute chart, obviously, but, uh, maybe 30 pips, which is a lot on the five. And then again, upset probably. Something like this, and depends which slice, as always, depends on which slice you want to try to catch. Um, this red arrow, risky, reversal, could not, could, might not be that bad. The green arrow probably has a bit more opportunity. The red even has more opportunity because it probably is a bigger resistance. Zone. But of course, it doesn't have to bounce a lot. It could only be 100 pips maybe, which is a lot on a four hour, which is a lot on a five minute chart, but not that much on a four hour chart. All right, folks. Well, thank you so much for joining. I wish you good trading. I hope you catch a lot of pips. And uh, I hope to see you in tomorrow's webinar. We've got strategy lined up for us tomorrow. And Nana is going to take a look uh, as well in the evening. And we have a webinar lined up on trade management on Thursday evening. So I hope to see you in one of these webinars. I hope that uh, the connections will not be as disturbing. And uh, thanks for hanging in here so long. And, and we just considering the... Uh, the connection problems and thanks again talk to you soon cheers